start. All right. Hello. Good morning. Um, I'm doing announcements this morning, so <laughs> um, thank you all for coming. Um, if you are a visitor to Family Worship Center, please fill out um, one of the insert, the blue insert in the bulletin, and then slip it in the offering basket. Um, we also, this is the last day for uh, Operation Christmas Child boxes, so uh, thank you for everyone who supplied those boxes for the boys and girls all around the world. Um, Darren and I tomorrow are going to take them to, um, which church? Uh, New Hope. Yeah, New Hope, and so they're going to get sent out from there. Um, and if you just take a moment with me, I'm going to pray over the boxes. So if you join me in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for all these people doing all the, all the work for these boxes, Lord. Um, and just thank you for their generous hearts, Lord. And I pray that you just bless these boxes and send them out to kids um, and just send them <laughs> to the ones that need them most, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Um, ladies, we're planning to decorate the church on Saturday, December 4th at 10 a.m. Um, for Christmas. So come and help us get the sanctuary ready for Christmas. Um, there's also a youth Christmas party happening December 15th on Wednesday, which is Wednesday night um, at the youth pastor, or at my house, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, at my house, at see Courtney's me house. or Courtney for more information about that. There will be um, games, there will be food, um, we'll have a hot chocolate bar, um, and yeah, there will just be fun. So, um, And then Youth Winter Camp is happening December, or sorry, January 28th to the uh, 28th through the 30th. Um, see me or Courtney for more details. We have some packets printed out already. Uh, the cost is a little high. It's $140, and then there's also a $40 non-refundable non non um, deposit. Uh, so that needs to be in uh, by December 12th. Um, for we would like the forms back December 8th so we can get all the, the money in. Um, there's a schedule change. There is no Wednesday night groups this week because of uh, no because of Thanksgiving, uh, November 24th, which is Wednesday. Um, no services because of Thanksgiving. Um, and also our, i oh, sorry. Um, there's also a birthday, which is Bob Beach, uh, which is Thanksgiving, Where November are you, 25th. Bob? Yeah. Um, Who are you watching? So if you see him, tell him happy birthday. Um, and then, our missionaries for the rest of no for the second half of November is uh, Phil and Robin Malcolm our missionaries to Africa. So and I believe there's a video. No, not a oh, video, but a video. I do have a message okay, from them. Message. I contacted Phil, and as you know, uh, how many of you have been praying for Phil? He's got cancer. Uh, he's been working through that, a really rare form of cancer, and he just wanted uh, us to know. Uh, while I, t I let him know that he's his, he's our missionary of the week, and he said, your prayers for my healing are so much in ne needed and appreciated. Uh, he also wanted me to share this, which just, again, confirms to me that our missionaries are my heroes. Um, he is still working on missions work, even though he is going through chemo and all the things he's going through. Uh, the first thing is he's asking that we pray for them as they're in round two, Round two of building Sunday school shelters in Burkina Faso. Uh, also, he's uh, helping, they're helping with a rehabilitation center for street kids with building sanitation facilities uh, at their school for technical job training. I'm not sure where that is, whether that's in Burkina Faso or somewhere else in Africa. And uh, finishing the health care clubs for kids' curriculum. And so he just wanted me to let you know that they appreciate all your prayers for for their he, for his healing of course and for robin as she uh deals with this with her husband but also uh for these projects that are still going on so thank you for your prayers this week as you go to the lord in prayer as we read follow our reading calendar uh please remember to take phil and robin to the throne this week um, we're please prepare your hearts for worship as um, I give it back to Darren to start worship. Thank you.
Well, this week is Thanksgiving week, and so I thought praise and thanksgiving for all that God has done is, is more than appropriate this week. Amen. Don't you agree with that? And so let's begin by uh, singing the song, Give You Glory. We have raised a thousand voices just to fill your holy name. And we lift a thousand more to sing of the beauty of this place. Well, none can even fathom, no, not one, define your worth. As we marvel in your presence to the ends of the earth, we give you glory, lifting up our hands and singing holy. You alone are worthy. We just want to touch your heart, Lord, touch your heart, Lord. Glory, lifting up our hearts and singing holy. You alone are worthy. And we just want to touch your heart, Lord, touch your heart. And as we fall down before you, with our willing hearts we seek. In the greatness of your glory, it's so hard to even speak. There's nothing we can offer, no, nothing can repay. So we give you all our praises, and we lift our voice and see. We give you glory, lifting up our hands and singing holy. You alone are worthy. We just want to touch your heart, Lord, touch your heart and sing glory. Lifting up our voice and singing holy, you alone are worthy. We just want to touch your heart, Lord, touch your heart, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just want to praise your name this morning. Lift your voices, lift your hearts this morning in praise. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness, for your glory, Lord. We praise you, Lord, this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor. Hallelujah. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to be, you were the king of kings, yeah, you were, yeah, you were, and now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out, we join you as we sing glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, all glory to God, glory to God forever. Creator God, you gave me breath so I could praise your great and matchless name. All my days, all my days, a life that shines blazing offering a life that shouts and sings the greatness of our king glory to god glory to god glory to god forever all glory to god glory to god Glory to God forever. And take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. We sing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to 
God, all glory to God, glory to God forever. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All glory and praise and honor to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are so thankful, Lord, for your amazing grace that has made the way. Lord Jesus, your sacrifice has opened the door that was slammed shut by sin, Lord. You opened it back up for us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears <coughs> relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. My chains are gone. I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, my chains are gone. I've been set free. Savior, He's ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Amazing love, amazing grace, unending love. Amazing grace. <laughs> there is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah. Holy One, Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious.
precious Lamb of God, Messiah, O oh, for sinners slain. And thank you, O oh, my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. And when I stand in glory, I will see his face, and there I'll serve my King forever in that holy place. And thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. And leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being our Redeemer, for making that way, Lord, for coming and being obedient, Lord, to death, even death on a cross that paid the price for me, Lord. I'm not worthy, but you loved me so much that you did that for me and for all of us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord, for that. Lord, for that and so much more. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I just hope that... Uh, especially in this week of Thanksgiving, but all through the year that our hearts would just be full of praise and thanksgiving for the greatness of our God and all that he's done. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. All right. Well, one of the best ways to thank him for what he's done is... Uh, is communion. We're going to go ahead and take communion this morning as well uh, toward the end. Uh, and we're going to thank, thank the Lord for his sacrifice. Jesus said that whenever you do this, he didn't say you need to do this once a month, you need to do this certain whatever, but every time, every time you do this, remember me. Remember what I've done for you. Amen. So that's what we're going to do this morning. So Prepare yourself for that. If you're online and you'd like to join us, uh, you can prepare yourself as well. <coughs> and that would be appreciated. Psalm chapter 9, verses 1 and 2 says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises of your name, O Most High. That's what it's all about this week, amen? Sometimes we think, well, you know, it's uh, we got to get the turkey ready and all that kind of thing, and I love it. I love all of that. But uh, do you, do you want to know what the signs are for uh, that you ate too much for Thanksgiving? I think probably you say, well, Pastor, I already know what the signs are when I eat too much. But just in case you're wondering, here's some other signs that you might be uh, looking out for just to be careful this, this week. If the doctor tells you that your weight is perfect for a man who's 17 feet tall, then you know you've probably eaten too much. Uh, you're responsible for a slight but measurable shift in the Earth's axis. 
Paramedics bring in the jaws of life to pry you out of the easy, easy chair. Uh, the potatoes you used to set off another famine in Ireland. Uh, <laughs> you receive a sumo wrestler application in the email. Uh, you s these are just some, you know, be looking out for these things. You set off a, a three earthquake seismographs in your morning jog on Friday. Uh, pricking your finger for cholesterol screening only yielded gravy. Uh, you consider gluttony your patriotic duty and representatives from the Butterball Hall of Fame called you twice. So anyway, things to be watching out for. I don't think any of us in this room are, are in danger of those things, but just in case, I'll be looking out for myself. But I remember as a kid how Thanksgiving was. Just a wonderful time uh, getting together with family, and of course, everybody would bring in the parts of the meal that they were famous for. My, my cousin had this salad that she always would bring, and just everybody would bring their specialty items. And so, of course, there's so many great things, and you want to try them all. Uh, I would fill up my plate with, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah, I need some of this. I've got to have turkey and all of that kind of thing. And I uh, eat it up, and uh, next thing I know, I'm miserable for about an hour or so. Just, I mean, absolutely, I couldn't sit down. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't do anything, lay down. Everything was miserable, and it took about a half an hour, hour to get to a place where I just felt comfortable again. And I learned over the years the trick on how to do this because Thanksgiving ultimately is always about certain, you know, a bunch of different dishes. So I take a little bit of everything, and I eat that up, and then I wait. And then after about 20, 30 minutes, uh, I think, well, you know, I could use a couple more olives and uh, I want some more of that stuffing. I'll take a little tiny bit of those. And then after that, I'm satisfied. I'm happy. So that's free for you uh, in case you needed th to know that. But that's how to have a, a little bit more pleasant Thanksgiving. But, you know, Thanksgiving, I, all kidding aside, it's, it's a whole lot more than just food. It's, it's all about family. It's all about tradition. It's all about uh, thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. It's not just, oh, thank you, thank you. But it's, it's, it originally started as thanks to God. The U.S. is all about plenty. We've been a nation of, that has been blessed, and we have lots, plenty. In fact, so much that we overeat, so much that we have Black Friday that now begins on Thursday night, Thanksgiving night. To me, that's just a shame that we want so much, want, 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 get, 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 that it is overshadowing not only Christmas, but overshadowing the true meaning of Thanksgiving as well. And uh, I, don't, I don't like to let Christmas overshadow Thanksgiving. I like Thanksgiving to be its own holiday, and then we can start concentrating on, on Christmas and just continuing the process. The beginning of Thanksgiving Day was started by a group of people who were grateful to God because they were starving to death in very, very difficult conditions. And by God's grace and mercy, they survived and they were grateful and gave gratitude to God. Uh, I have a, a whole thing on the, uh, on the story of Thanksgiving, probably familiar to most of us. I won't read it all, but this is from The Light and the Glory, a, a book by Peter Marshall and David Man Manuel, Manuel's account of uh, the pilgrims at Plymouth Rock. And it just talked about how difficult it was. Uh, as they landed after very tough time on the sea, uh, not only did they have a difficult time getting to the new land, but also the winter was especially brutal, and it left them ragged and malnourished, susceptible to disease. Uh, the pilgrims' daily existence was a life-or-death death battle to overcome constant hunger, sickness, exposure to the elements, in crudely assembled houses made of mud, were the only shelter that they had from the icy New England winter. Because they were not yet knowledgeable about their new environment, the agriculture, how to even take care of themselves, 
in the hostile conditions, it was all fruitless trying to take care of themselves. Every meal was portioned out meticulously, and the death toll was constantly a reminder that they were fragile. Well, despite all their tribulations, the pilgrims thanked the Lord every day, petitioning him, help, help us, Lord. We thank you for this new land. We thank you that we made it, but, Lord, we are in need. And so one, one morning during a Sunday, or an ordinary Sunday worship service, the Lord sent evidence, tangible evidence, that he had heard their prayers when uh, unexpected guests show up. The local Native Americans came, and uh, they came with food and they came with provisions and they came with knowledge to help them to get started and because of this new relationship they had a time that that we know of as the first thanksgiving where they gave thanks to god and they uh for his provision and for these people who came who have lived there and they knew how to help them out and help them to survive and, uh, so much more to the story but again it was all about being grateful to God for his care. We live in a world that's, that forgets that, that forgets all that God has done for us. For this, is, this land is a country, a nation, and we need to get back to that. We need to thank God for his grace, thank him for his, his goodness to us. Thanksgiving sometimes is a lost art, being thankful. I love Thanksgiving as a day of relaxation with family. Love to watch the parade in the morning, sometimes football if my family lets me watch football. But we should never stay away, never stray away from the true meaning of the day. You know, we're always saying, hey, Jesus is the reason for the season when it comes to Thanksgiving. Well, he's also the reason for Thanksgiving because without him, we would be uh, more lost than the pilgrims were on that day. So I want to begin this look at a lifestyle of gratitude as we encourage ourselves uh, by looking at a familiar story from Luke chapter 17. might be familiar to some of you, a lot of you perhaps. Uh, chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, we're going to look start with uh, verse 11. 17, 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met with him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. So let's just pause right there. So here we see Jesus. He's traveling back to Jerusalem. In fact, in fact, he's traveling back for the last time. His time was near. The time of the cross was coming. It was looming. And so he was making his way back. And it says that he was traveling along the border of Galilee and Samaria. Now, as we know, the Samaritans and the Jews were not good neighbors, not good friends. They didn't get along. The Jews saw them as dogs, and, and uh, the Samaritans didn't like that, so they didn't like the Jews either. But here we were. We see this ten men uh, stricken with leprosy, probably Jews and Samaritans together, and because of their suffering, because of their disease, all everything was set aside. We're suffering together. And they saw Jesus and shouted out to him. Ten men stricken with leprosy, called out. They were the outcasts of society. Uh, they were, there were certain rules that had to be followed. If you don't know anything about leprosy, it was a uh, word given to various skin diseases. But regardless of what kind of skin disease it was, they were basically cast out. Uh, they lost their families. They lost their jobs. They lost the privilege of even being able to live in the city anymore. They had to live outside of the city. It was social distancing to the max back then. The diagnosis of leprosy means you are cursed, you've lost everything. Everything. It's likely, and as I said, that this was a mixture of Jews and Samaritans. One theologian said this, a common misfortune 
had broken down racial and national barriers. And in the common tragedy of their leprosy, they had forgotten that they were Jews and Samaritans and remembered only that they were men in need. Jesus instructed them to follow the normal procedure. He said, you need to go and show yourselves to the priest. Back in those days, only the priest could declare them clean or not, healed or not. But interestingly enough, the priests could only tell, say and proclaim what, what was, but Jesus could make what wasn't happen. See, the priest could say, you're healed or you're not, but Jesus says, you're healed, and they were healed. That, it's just amazing. But uh, following along with the way that things were, he said, okay, go show yourselves to the priest. And notice that they weren't healed yet. He just said, go and show yourselves to the priest. And it says that as they went, they were cleansed. As they took the steps, they didn't say, but Jesus, how's that going to work? Because we, you know, we can't go. As they went, they were cleansed. Wonderful. The progression was this. They were diseased, but then they became cleansed, healed, and restored. But as we'll see as we continue, only one returned to give thanks. Verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice, and he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he, he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, we're not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So he realized, this man realized as he was walking uh, that we've been healed. And he immediately turned around and went back with praises. And he threw himself down at Jesus' feet. This is an act of, of humble gratitude and worship to the Lord. You know, isn't it, isn't it normal? I mean, isn't it... Uh, distasteful. We, we teach our kids that it's, it's not the right thing to do to not be thankful. You know, if grandma gives you a present for Christmas, what do you say? Thank you, grandma. Thank you. It's, it's not a good thing to not be thankful. And Jesus said, hey, where, where's these other guys? Only one came. Only one came and was, was thankful. He threw himself down as an act of humble gratitude and worship. Jesus made the remark that all ten of them were healed. All ten of them experienced a physical miracle. But only the one came back with thanksgiving and praise. And even though all ten were healed, restored physically and socially, they got to get back to their families, they got their jobs back, they could live in town again, they could have their possessions back. This one, only this one received eternal life. So those guys, yeah, we're healed. Woo! But this guy said, and I'm saved. I'm saved. Jesus says, because of your faith, you have been made well. And that's what that means, is that you're saved. You've been saved because of your faith. You know, if we look, we can always find reasons to be grateful to God. Isn't that true? If you look, sometimes we don't bother to look. We just go on. That's what these nine were doing. Uh, Matthew Henry, famous Bible commentator from long, long ago, was robbed of his wallet one day. And he wrote in his diary that night the things that he was thankful about after that robbery. First, he said, I'm thankful that I've never been robbed before. Secondly, and he's looking for reasons to be thankful to God, Secondly, though they took my wallet, at least they didn't take my life. Thirdly, Matthew Henry said, because even though they took it all, it wasn't very much. And then finally, he was thankful. He says, I'm thankful this day because I was the one who was robbed and I wasn't the one who did the robbing. I wasn't the robber. I was the one robbed. You see, as you look in any situation, we can be thankful. We're not thankful, you know, it, it's silly 
to say, oh, I'm thankful for this cold, Lord. Woo! I'm thankful that I'm sick. That's, that's ridiculous. I'm thankful, God, that even though I'm sick, I can praise your name. You have a testimony back there? Yeah, there's always a way to be thankful. We can always be thankful. Amen. So Luke chapter 17 shows us this, uh, this one man who was thankful. Uh, he had the attitude that we need to be able to have. Well, let's turn to Psalm chapter 100. And this is a psalm of thanksgiving. It's even called the, thank, the uh, Thanksgiving psalm because it's all about thanks. Very short, but it's just jam-packed with praise and thanksgiving. And so we've seen the story of the men who were healed and the one who was thankful. And now let's take a look at, well, then how can I live a life of gratitude like this guy? How can I be like this guy? How can I be like Matthew Henry that even though he was robbed, he was thankful? The Psalm of Thanksgiving, Psalm 100. It says this, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's break this down. Shout his praise. Shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth. Who is to shout? Who is to praise the Lord? All the earth. Well, we know that that's probably not a likely thing. So what happens? God's people need to raise praise to the Lord. God's people need to live a life of gratitude and thanksgiving. And in doing so, we are the example to everyone else. Israel's purpose as God's chosen people was to show God to the world. That's what they were for. That's why God chose them. He said, you're my chosen people. I'm your father. I'm your God, and you're my people. It was all to be an example. It was all to be a, uh, a witness to the world. And we continue that witness. Yes, the world is so many times ungrateful. The world is so hostile toward uh, God, toward Christianity. But we're his people, and we need to lift up his praises so that one day all the earth will worship and praise him. As we as people lift up praises to him, give all credit to him for everything, the world will see and hopefully do likewise. You know, even nature itself praises God. Even nature itself. Oh, I thought I had that word here. I didn't. But what I meant to uh, have at this point is, uh, I believe it's in Isaiah. Uh, the mountains and the hills will break forth before me. Uh, the trees will clap their hands. Remember that? It's a song from back in the day. I will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before me. Uh, I'm trying to think of the song. Shouts of joy. Shouts of joy. Not just, oh, thanks, God. Shouts of joy. And the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. Have you ever seen a tree clap? Well, no, I haven't either. But you know what? In a sense, <laughs> in a sense, the trees, all of nature is worshiping God Almighty. And we need to join with them. Remember when Jesus rode into Jerusalem and, the, and everyone's saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the, the Pharisees were saying, hey, you better shut these people up because they're acting like you're the Messiah. We know you're not the Messiah, right? Jesus said, what do you say? He said, if these people don't praise me, then the rocks are going to cry out. That's just how it is. The truth is the truth. Shout joyfully. The sense is like those who cheer on a king who's entering in, like they were cheering on Jesus when he was entering in Jerusalem that day. When, when the king comes back from battle, you think, rides into the castle, and everybody's, woo, they're just 
cheerful and joyful. It's when our football team, Bobby, are you watching? It's when the Ducks make a football, uh, make a goal. Touchdown, right? But God, doesn't God deserve just as much, if not more, joyful praise and thanksgiving? He does. The next verse, number two, says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Now the Hebrew word here that the NIV is saying worship is serve. Serve. So it's more than just vocally worshiping him, but it's serving him, worshiping him with service doing things. It's hands-on. It's not just, okay, I acknowledge God. Yep. But he has things for us to do. It's, it's serving God. The great commandment that Jesus gave, remember when the Pharisees were saying, hey, what's the most important commandment? And he gave what we call the great, greatest commandment. And he said, first, you need to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And secondly, is just like it. You need to love your neighbor as yourself. In order to properly live a life of gratitude, of thanksgiving, a, a life of praise, we need to serve God by serving one another. We need to serve others. There are people who are in need. We need to see them, and serve them in the name of Jesus. And that is worshiping our God in ways that is so great. When we serve and worship the Lord rightly, as, as Psalm 100 tells us, then we benefit ourselves, yes, and we benefit other people. We serve him with gladness, and we bring, which brings songs of worship deep within. Uh, come before him with joyful songs. Oh, I'm not a singer, Pastor. It's okay. Remember, God loves a joyful noise. It doesn't have to be melodic. He loves a joyful noise. He sees the heart. He doesn't say, oh, you're, oh, you're flat. No, he accepts it all because he's a loving father and we're, we're his kids and we make mistakes and maybe we sing off key, but, but we love him and we need to express that to him. Verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. Know that the Lord is God. The Lord, Yahweh, he is God. He is, ever, he is the ever-existing, the eternal one, the I am. We need to know it and we need to live it. Amen? Oh, yeah, I know he's God. Yeah, well, the, the demons know he's God, too. But do you know God? Do you know him? Are you his child? He is the creator, the maker, and we are his creation. He made us, and we belong to him. It says, it's he who made us. And uh, in some versions, it says, and not we ourselves. Some, some people like to go around saying, uh, I'm a self-made man. And I just want to say, well, why would you make yourself like that? God is the one who made us. God is the one who deserves our praise. He's the Lord. But not only that, not only is he the creator and we're the creation, but it says that we are the sheep of his pasture. And boy, I tell you, if you have been around here for uh, you know, the last couple of months, I've hit the whole fact that Jesus is the great shepherd, the good shepherd, so many times. And we understand that. We are helpless without him. We need him. We are the sheep of his pasture. We need to trust in him. Amen. He's good. Paul expressed confidence in knowing God. Uh, see, this here says, Know that the Lord is God. And Paul said this. He said, in uh, 2 Timothy 1, 11 and 12, he said, And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet, this is no cause for shame because, and here he goes, I know in whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard that which I've entrusted to him until that day. I've entrusted my life to him until the end day, the day of glory, the day of my end, the day when I enter into his glory, the first day of eternity with him. I trust him. See, Paul says, I know. I know who I trust in. I know who I believe. I know who my life, whose hands my life is in. 
Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Enter into his, into his presence. Uh, the psalmist here is giving an illustration of the temple, the gates, and the courts. We're welcome into his glorious presence. That wasn't always the case. But now, because of what Jesus did, because he made the way, we can enter in with gladness, joyful shouts of praise and thanksgiving. To live a life of thanksgiving and gratitude is not a characteristic that, that we should have to force. It should be a natural outflow because we're walking with God every day. But Paul told Timothy that it was expected. He said in, or not Timothy, sorry, the church at Thessalonica. He said this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. He said, rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So if you wonder, well, should I be thankful? It's God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So let's do it. Amen? I came across a quote uh, by someone named Unknown. I think he's said a lot of things. Um, and this is this, this particular quote. Giving thanks is too often demoted to a secondary place in the prayers of Christ's people. That's sad. We are quick to make our requests and slow to thank God for his answer. Because God so often answers our prayers, we come to expect it. We forget that it's only by his grace that we receive anything at all. Helen Keller said this, So much has been given to me that I have no time to ponder that which I don't have. If you know who Helen Keller was, she was blind and deaf all her life blind and deaf all her life. But she even said, so much has been given to me. I've been blessed so much. I don't know where she was at with, with God, but she re recognized the blessing in her life that she didn't have time to, oh, I can't see, I can't hear. She didn't have time to worry about that, have a pity party. Isn't it terrible when a child, I've seen videos and stuff, my kids never did this, but when a Christmas morning and the kid, oh yeah, got their present and they open it up and it's a great gift but it's not the one that they were asking for for one reason or another that gift just wasn't possible it ran out it's too expensive whatever but we got you this because this is a good gift and he throws a fit that's not what i wanted ah! how terrible that is but we can be like little kids if we're not grateful and thankful for every blessing Sometimes we only recognize the big ones and we forget about all the little ones. Are you breathing today? Did you eat today? Do you have a home? You need to be thankful. You need to be grateful for God. No matter what we face in life, there's always a reason for gratitude to God. A note, the ten lepers, when they, when they saw Jesus coming... They said, oh, have mercy on us. They were shouting. They were yelling, getting his attention. We have a need. Have mercy on us. But then when this one guy, this Samaritan guy came back, what was he doing? He was shouting, praise God. Thank you. And he threw himself down. Thank you for this healing. Just as exuberant, he was praising God. <coughs> All of them should have been that. I said this earlier, I said thankfulness is a lost art. In 1860, the Lady Elgin, which was a side wheel steamship on the Great Lakes, was rammed by the Augusta, another v vessel, and sank in Lake Michigan near Evanston, Illinois. A ministerial student by the name of Edward Spencer waded again and again out to the fr through the frigid waters to rescue the passengers. In the process, his health was permanently damaged. He was never the same physically. Some years later at his funeral, it was noted that not even one of the people that he rescued came to thank him, ever. Thankfulness is a lost art. Let's bring it back into popularity, shall we? Especially to our God. So what are you thankful for? Remember, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you for all of us in Christ Jesus. God's goodness, mercy will never leave you. In fact, he even prepares blessings for you in the middle of hard seasons. But these truths aren't always easy to remember. 
which is why giving thanks matters. Gratitude helps us to focus on the only one who has been able to turn our problems around for his glory and for our good. So right now, let's just take a moment. Let's just think about things we're thankful for. Let's just think about it. Maybe it's family. Maybe there's difficulties in families, but at least there's something in families to be thankful for, whatever it may be. You might even look next to you, to your right or to your left, a spouse, a child, a friend, a family member. Are you thankful for them? When we choose to live a life of gratitude, looking for blessings of the Lord in our lives, we don't have time to complain about the not-so-fun parts of life. Learning to be thankful in all situations is a maturity thing. God can and will develop all that in you if you allow him to. Don't be that spoiled child on Christmas Day. This isn't what I wanted. Be like that other kid. I don't know if you've seen the video. <gasps> An avocado. Thank you. You see that one? If you've seen the video, you know what I'm talking about. If not, it's cute. So we're going to prepare for uh, communion right now, Lord's Supper. And this is an act of thanksgiving to our God, to our Lord. So the guys are going to get ready to do that. As they do, I'm going to, we got another song that I'd like us to sing. And it goes well with uh, what communion is all about. So as they are serving it, please take the elements and hold on to them. We'll take communion together. And as they are serving, sing with me, if you will. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing guys can serve. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and Could you bring me some, too? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> a little awkward to have to run back and forth to the guitar, but we're looking for a worship, worship team, so uh, if you're interested, let us know. We could use a few more people up here.
All right. So Jesus said, every time you do this, no matter how often you do it, once a month, once a day, once a week, we don't take it without remembering what it means, or else it's just a, I like to say, it's just a small smack. But that's not what it is. It's a commemoration of the goodness of our God. It's something to be thankful for. This is what truly we need to be thankful for, Thanksgiving. And then Christmas is coming where we remember that God himself laid aside all of his glory and came as a small baby, helpless in a manger. Well, that's coming. That's coming. We're so thankful for that. But the bread, as we're told in Scripture, reminds us that Jesus' physical body was broken broken for us and there's healing in the body of Christ there's a lot of people who need healing in our body right now, a lot of people so let's just thank him for the healing, let's thank him for his broken body, Lord thank you so much for your goodness, thank you Lord Jesus that you, the son of God came and took our place on that cross and you allowed your body to be broken, you allowed your body to be beaten in our place because of your love Thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask for healing for those who need healing in this room, and in our families, wherever they may be. Lord, we ask it humbly in Jesus' name, and we thank you for your broken body. Amen. Let's partake of the bread together. And then the cup, of course, is, uh, represents his blood that was shed. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. He covered us. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood that was shed. Thank you, Lord, that you were the lamb that was slain before the creation of the world, that you are the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, that you are the first and the last. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you, Father, for sending your son for us. Amen. Let's partake of the cup together. Amen. Man. This is a, a prayer of thanks. I don't often like to read prayers because I feel like it's not really coming from my heart, but I'm going to read this because it's just, it's, it's good. It sums everything up. It says this, God, you are good, and your steadfast love endures forever. Even in the hardest seasons, I always have reason to worship you. Thank you for giving me victory and abundant life in Jesus Christ. Although I don't deserve it, you shower me with unconditional love and forgiveness. And so, no matter what the future may hold, I shout for joy because you are with me. You comfort me and you bless me in the presence of my enemies. Nothing compares to you and no weapon can stand against you. In all things, I am more than a conqueror in you. Be glorified through me, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart bless your name. I want my life to bring you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Psalm 9 again. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wondrous deeds, and I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Let that be our lives. Thank you for being here this morning. Thanks for joining us you've joined us online. God bless you and have a wonderful Thanksgiving week. Let it be the best one ever. Amen? Amen. Maybe you may be